explode. They are. Yes, yes. Use, use, use mirror. Okay. Then it's easy. Should be yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's full. So uh, let's just try to get that page open, full screen. Full screen. Uh, F -M. So you refer? No, no, let's just start the time, the like, original time. Ah, okay. Okay, and our last talk for today, uh, some more magic between identity management and the uh, desktop. Um, <coughs> Fleet Commander and Fabiana and Oliver will tell you all about this speech to light. So, uh, firstly, thanks all for coming, thanks all for staying to this time. Uh, we are going to be talking about Fleet Commander and why it is the most efficient way uh, to manage the desktop profiles of your fleet. You can see a bunch of logos there. It's because Fleet Commander is a project integrated with uh, Cockpit, Spice, uh, FreeAPA, and SSSD, at least. Uh, for now, this is a Fedora-specific project. And I am Fabian Fidencio, and here is Oliver Gutierrez with me. So, uh, I guess the first question is, what is a desktop profile? Uh, this is like nothing more than a group of uh, desktop related settings that you just combine them and distribute them for a user group, a machine, or a group of machines. And this is what we will be dealing with. So, uh, what is Fleet Commander? The Fleet Commander project uh, was started uh, a few years ago. I was still part of the desktop team, although not working directly with this. Uh, it was created mainly because it's a real, real hell, a real pain for sysadmins uh, to manage desktop profiles. And if you are not a sysadmin, you may be asking, like, why? Uh, basically, uh, there are a few solutions. Uh, those solutions are usually leaving behind some or messing with the user's home, uh, home directory. We don't do that. Like, we don't want to do that. This is, like, not something quite good to do because well, it's not helping like when you are going to update those changes, so this is something like that is not good. Uh, and so far, we have been lacking a tool that could do that for us, like that could help us. And that's when uh, Fleet Commander was created. And the main idea behind the project is this is integrated with GNOME. We know what we are doing. Uh, we are not leaving files behind in the user's home directory. We are just like doing it in the most clean and easy way. We are going to show you guys uh, later on how easy it actually is. And just to have like everyone on the same page, let me just tell you what Fruit Commander is not. Uh, we are not a system-wide management configuration tool. We, we don't do that. We just care about desktop. We are just caring about no. Uh, there are other tools that can help you with this. This is not what we do. Uh, we are not a script-based solution. We are a natural tool integrated with GNOME desktop. So you're not going to, be, uh, to have your hands dirty at some point. And we are not an identity and policy management tool. We, re we actually rely on free APA for doing this job for us. And let me just, actually Oliver is going to give you guys like a, a brief overview about the project, uh, its parts. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, uh, Fleet Commander is uh, divided in three pieces of software. Uh, the first one is the Fleet Commander Armin. Uh, it's, a it's a cockpit plugin 
and it's a web-based solution where you can manage and modify and add settings to a desktop profile. Uh, the second part is a fleet commander logger because we use uh, an special way you will see later to get the settings you will uh, you will add to the to the actual profile uh, because uh, we have a program running in a virtual machine logging all the changes you are doing for the, the desktop configuration and you will have uh, the option to check uh, what changes have you done and select the ones you want for the, for that profile. And there is the Fleet Commander Client, that is a tool that is installed in all the machines you have in your network. So when SSSD uh, completes the logging uh, procedure, uh, it takes the information for the profiles that apply to that user. And Fleet Commander Clients do the step of taking that information and apply the configuration uh, to, the, to the desktop user. So. The, currently, we support uh, uh, so, uh, different subsets of settings, uh, and we have two ways to get that settings in, into a profile. The first one, that is the easier one uh, in, in, in some way, is the web interface, where you can, uh, using a custom web, web, uh, web interface, to add some kind of, of uh, settings. For example, the GNOME Software Editor Picks Applications. Okay, when you open GNOME Software, you have uh, the Editor Picks uh, in the upper row. So you can change, uh, you, you can uh, set them in a web tool inside the uh, Fleet Commander Admin pl uh, plugin. Uh, the GNOME Online accounts uh, follow the same procedure. You have uh, a special uh, uh, UI for um, for editing the, the accounts that apply to, to some users. And we have the live session, that is the one where logger step in. And w uh, with the live session, we are able to get uh, any G setting based application, what, whatever setting of a, of a G settings based application can be logged with the logger. Also for LibreOffice. And a network manager, for, for example, creating a VPN or a Wi-Fi, uh, with a, a, and it will become stored inside the, um, the profile. Well, this is demo time. We have a video for that. We have a video for that, but we will dare to try to do it uh, live. Yeah. So it may. Not so if work. it explodes, disclaimer. <laughs> Just cover your face. <laughs> Okay, so I have the machines here. We'll open. Okay, so uh, master APA example. I will so enter into cockpit here. Yeah, we are logging into cockpit as the fleet commander at me is a cockpit plugin. Uh, there is this uh, fleet commander tab there. You click it on it, and then you can add a new profile. This is quite simple. You just like set the profile name, uh, set which are the users which are going to be affected by the by this desktop profile, and then you can edit that. Just wait a minute. Uh, you have like here is the settings we, we told you. Like we have this uh, GNOME account. We have the uh, I like apps, but we are going to actually show you the live session, and hopefully it's going to work. Uh -huh. So when you click in the live session, it's just going to uh, download, uh, load like a template. Uh, all the machines you have on your Libre session, uh, usually you get a completely raw installation to apply your profiles, like on top of that. And this is what we are doing. We are just like putting up the machine. Uh, it's using Spice HTML5. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, because of the resolution, I have to scroll. And here, what we are going to do is, uh, you can see this is the, the background of this machine. Oops, not anymore. Yeah, yeah, I have to, 
to, to kill the, yeah. the welcome application. So you have this background, the, the default one. Yeah, for and session. we are going to change the background uh, during this live session, and then we are going to show you guys how it's going to be applied like on a client machine. Okay, I will get, for example, this one. Okay, so the background is changed here. And we have this button, that is the review and submit one. Wait, wait a minute, before you review submit, can uh -huh. you open a, a machine, a client machine, just to be sure that we didn't, like that we don't have a machine with that background set up? Yeah, yeah, we, we, are not cheat, we are not cheating. <laughs> so I log in with administrator. Yeah, Sorry. please don't do that, this is not like. Use it like with different users than administrator, please. So okay. here is like the, the client machine. We are going to do the changes on the live session. Apply them, log out, and then uh, log in again to show you guys. Okay, so that it actually works. back to this. I have this uh, background, and I can review the changes I, I have done. And in the changes I have done, there is the background one. So I will select it and save it to the profile. Okay, now it's saved, so uh, the, the, settings, the setting is already saved into free IPA. <coughs> so I can just log out here. And then when I log in again, it should have a different background. The one I selected at the profile. Just that. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, w going back to the presentation, what happened here? Uh, do you want to explain or? <laughs> Go ahead for the fleet commander part. Okay. Uh, really, well, what we have uh, we done here was uh, okay. We created a profile at the cockpit session we had using the fleet commander admin plugin. That profile. Uh, need some settings inside it, so for getting them, I just uh, connected by SSH to the bare metal machine uh, and run a virtual machine uh, that has the logger installed in it. Uh, the logger uh, is all the time checking the changes in the configuration, in dconf, in several places, uh, depending on the kind of settings you are trying to, to, to log. And that information is sent using Spice you directly to, to the Fleet Commander admin. Uh, when you click on the review boot button, you have the list of all the changes that the logger was all the time reporting. You just select them, and when you click the save profile, that information is stored in the free IPA desktop profiles plugin that is written specifically by Ale Alexander Bogovoy uh, for free IPA. Uh, this is what happens uh, pretty much on the master side and then on the virtual machine. Uh, on the client side, this is quite simple. Uh, we took advantage of a, a machinery that SSSD already had uh, for 8 buck. So we just like expanded this, uh, made the code like reusable and added the support for this. So pretty much what we do is like, once you are logging in, uh, we have a, a pun session model that is just pretty much what it does is it asks uh, free IPA like I am this user, part of those groups uh, on this machine that is part of this host group. Do you have something for me? Uh, in case it has, uh, we are just going to download to fetch all this, uh, those profiles and fire a uh, debug call to Fleet Commander client. Then the client will just combine all those profiles together and apply them at login time. Yeah. And this is pretty much what we, uh, what showed you guys like. And let me tell you, like, uh, if you guys want to give it a try, everything is available on Fedora 26 or newer. Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. Uh, while we were preparing this presentation, we found some bugs on SSSD side. So, my part. <laughs> uh, 
we have the packs. So the patches are going to be reviewed and hopefully merged by next week. Today. Today? <laughs> Super. Perfect. So we have someone to review and merge the patches today. Nice, thanks. Uh, and they will be back ported to Fedora at least 27. Not sure about 26. But in the worst case, actually this is not that bad. Uh, while you're doing this whole presentation, we came up with a project that is called Fleet Commander Vagrants that just use uh, some Vagrant machines and Ansible to set up an environment that we use it to provide you guys a demo. So you can just clone it, run setup, and you are pretty much done to start testing this and taking a look on how it works and see whether it fits you or not. And as, as I have control of those, patches are there already. So <laughs> just like clone it, and start using it. If you guys have some issues, just come, come and talk to us. Uh, here is the Git repo. Uh, those slides are already updated in the website. So go there, clone it. If you have some issues, open some, uh, yeah, some issues, issues. <laughs> on, on GitHub, and I really have to fix that. Hopefully. Oops. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. So. Uh, Plans for future releases. You can okay. go ahead. Uh, well, right now uh, we are working on supporting uh, the browsers because uh, we don't have uh, currently support for them. We want to support firstly the um, the settings of, on the browser and then about the part of uh, getting the bookmarks. That is kind of a different way to handle them. Also, there are, uh, we are in need of a lot of enhancements in the UI and in user experience. As you've seen, we have to create a profile and then edit it to go inside, and it's kind of where that, but it's something that we created when we started with, uh, with the prototype, and we, don't, we didn't have to, time to do that uh, until now. And also, we want to support direct integration with Active Directory. Because uh, right now there are a lot of customers uh, asking us for using this with uh, the, the existing environments they have. So uh, we think this is uh, it's a good part of it to do it. Uh, here, the key for this, I guess, is GPO. And Andreas is open his sweater. That's nice. Because <laughs> uh, he's a Samba developer. We need uh, some help from Samba guys. We had some talks before this. Uh, before this presentation. And if you are some developer, if you are interested, in, uh, interested to help us, to give us some help, please. Let's talk. We need your knowledge. We don't need you to do the work for us. We just need some help. And I guess we are going to get it. Right, Andreas? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and talking about we need your help, we really do. Uh, and we have some ideas that may be around for this round of Google Summer of Code. Some of them are going to be under GNOME, some of them are going to be under Fedora. Uh, as soon as we know whether the organizations are actually accepted, we are going to just do some blog posts uh, and try to find someone willing to help us with this. Uh, and of course, uh, we need some help with coding in all projects that are affected by this. Uh, well, software, we have bugs. Please uh, <laughs> come to us if you are interested. Like, we are going to help you to help us. And if you have some enhancement requests, you try to, you give it a try, you just give it a try, and there is something that you are not happy with, come, talk to us, join the Fleet Commander channel uh, at Freenode, and we are going to talk if your idea is something that fits with uh, what we want for the project, for sure, we are going to just uh, try to implement it as soon as possible. Uh, here, I really would like to say a big thanks to a few people who helped a lot in this project. Uh, first one is Alexander Bokovoy, who wrote the Free IPA desktop profile plugin 
This is like a nice part. Uh, Jakub, who is out there. Uh, Jakub helped me with the design page. The design page came from Jakub, and we had like several rounds of discussions, and he reviewed the patch. So thanks for that. Uh, Christian Heinz, uh, the whole uh, Fleet Commander Vagans project is a fork of one of his projects we talked before. Uh, and we decided to fork it because it's, it's a really nice project, and, but for very specific usage. So we got it for Fleet Commander, I talked to him, and it was an agreement. So thanks to him, we have like a tool that you can just run and test all this stuff. And Pavel Grunt, who is a former Spice developer, he did a lot, uh, he gave us a lot of help in order to have this Spice channel implemented that is just going to send the information from the live client to the, from the live session. To uh, the Fleet Commander Army. Uh, here is pretty much all the places where you can find us. <laughs> We are there, like, you can just join those channels. Uh, we are usually friendly, so usually. show up there. <laughs> Not uh, on days. <laughs> we, are, we are going to try to help you. Uh, if you have some really specific Fleet Commander issue, I would recommend go to the Fleet Commander channel. I'm there, uh, and then we can start debugging it, and, and then it will redirect you to either free IPA or SSSD channel. Some questions? Please? <coughs> so if the, if the administrator, the, the user, if he changes back his uh, uh, background desktop, uh, where he changes again the, the background, this will be overridden the next time you log in? Uh, the question is, uh, if I understood <laughs> very uh, well, uh, that if you put some uh, settings manually when you log in in your session, that settings are again overridden by, by Fleet Commander, you mean? No. Uh, the way Fleet Commander works is uh, we have the defaults in dconf right now, so uh, in the system. So when you create the profile the, with the settings for, the, for, the, for, for an specific user and the user logins, we create a layer over that uh, default settings. But the user layer is over that. So we read the settings in cascade, so uh, the, the settings of the user always uh, will be over the, the rest of the settings. But, but we are uh, programming, we are, we are now, right now developing uh, to force settings that they can don't overwrite. But they, uh, uh, that's, that's part of the DCOMF implementation, really. So we are working on that, but uh, we, didn't, we didn't have time to, to add it to. That's yours. <laughs> so uh, the question is how SSSD can cache, how well SSSD can cache the, this information? Well, it's well cached. Like, our cache has a timestamp. Do you remember how long is it by default, Yaku? Like minutes. Yeah. But even though, like, if the server is offline, the, the information is there. We are just going to. First thing is, uh, we are just firing uh, a request to LDAP. In a, I guess the default is like 60 minutes or something like that for this. So we're not going to keep asking the server every time the user logs in or, this is the first thing. Second thing is, once the, it's downloaded, in case the server goes down, we are not removing this. We are just checking if the server is up or not, and then we are just calling a uh, fleet commander client with the, the information that we have on disk. This is not like in cache. We end up like writing a file in disk, actually. Oh. And the one thing here is that um, yeah, they are, like they change it background, but the actual background file is part of what is on the machine already. So it does come through your configuration of package management. Roughly. So you have packages installed. You just reference those files. And the profile in, in itself is really like a path to a file, and the path within DCOM where it should set that well. 
So the profile itself is rarely going above a kilobyte or two if you have a lot of settings there. And it's cached. Yeah. Yep. You guys say you don't touch home. And yet, how do you manage to change settings of LibreOffice or talking about browser history or bookmark? Okay. The question is, uh, how, do w how do we manage to apply the settings without touching the home's directory? Because uh, we use, uh, well, we sent a patch uh, when this was uh, very early to deconf to allow to create that layers uh, over, the, over the system default one. And also we sent another patch to uh, LibreOffice to S make LibreOffice save that configuration inside deconf. So we more or less, uh, we, are, we are doing the, the modifications in the way that uh, all the information stored uh, in this way is in a slash run, slash user, slash your UID, uh, slash deconf. So any changes you do, you, so any settings uh, that are there, when you reboot, they are removed and they are uh, reapplied again using the fleet commander client. So uh, that information is not in the, in the home directory. In the browser part, for example, we use the browser policies uh, support. Uh, for Chromium and Chrome right now, we use the, the current support they have. And Mozilla is developing right now uh, policies uh, support also. So we are, we are going to use that. But in the meantime, we'll pr we will probably do some hacky thing to to allow the to allow using it until that development is is, fin is finished. Thank you. More questions? No. Well, then thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, who who were the guys who asked the questions? Yeah. Well, bef before that, just before that. This one. A bit, a bit of um, <coughs> request to you. So we we run Postman as a volunteer in the web. Oh, sorry. And please help us to clean up rooms because this is the last call. Uh, please help us to fill in this. Fill back. <laughs> so who has the questions? No, guys, want a T-shirt?